So, Wales was first Celtic, then Roman, then Saxon, even a few Vikings settled here. Then Wales was a bunch of little kingdoms, and the best way to learn about Welsh history is through its castles. In 1283, King Edward I ordered the building of castles in Wales. And today, Wales boasts more castles per square mile than anywhere else in the world. With more than 600 castles to go around, you'd think somebody would offer me one so I could be the princess. I only want one. But alas, that offer has yet to be delivered by my knight in shining armor. So in the meantime, let's get curious about Wales' iron ring of castles. In the late 13th century, England's King Edward I, nicknamed Longshanks because of his long legs, felt it was his divine duty to conquer Wales and make it a part of Britain. You know how those medieval kings can be. He built his legendary Iron Ring of Wales, a series of castles each a day's march apart, including Harlech, Bomaris, and Carnarvon, his grandest. Here's what I'm curious about at Carnarvon Castle. What are the walls of Constantinople doing in the middle of Wales? Why was Prince Charles crowned here? And why does England have a Prince of Wales at all? Today, Carnarvon Castle is a World Heritage Site and in medieval times was King Edward's main headquarters, the crown jewel in his iron ring, so to speak. In 1301, King Edward I invested his son, Edward II, as the first Prince of Wales. To the English, this was seen as England's loyalty to Wales, but to the Welsh, this was seen as a ruthless conquest. Think I'm kidding? Even when the most recent Prince of Wales, number 21, had his investiture here, His Royal Highness Prince Charles, of course, there were still Welsh people protesting no, no, no. outside the castle. And that was in 1969. So that centuries-old English-Welsh feud is alive and well today. And Carnarvon Castle is a powerful symbol of who was really in charge around here. The design of Carnarvon Castle is completely different than the other Edwardian castles here in Wales. As you'll see, it has these polygonal shapes and these striped stonework with different colors. Time for our why is that there moment. Well, it is modeled after the walls of Constantinople back in the Byzantine Roman Empire. Why? Well, apparently, King Edward believed he was fulfilling the dream of Roman Emperor Magnus Maximus by building this castle. All I have to say is, if he was doing that, well, King Edward had one Magnus Maximus ego. This is the Welsh legend of Breithuid Maxen Wiledig, or the dream of Emperor Maximus, which tells how Roman Emperor Maximus marries a British woman, which then transfers the authority of the Roman Empire to the British Empire. So Maximus is considered the founding father of the Welsh royal dynasties. Ah. So, just as Roman emperors ruled over the Roman Empire, Edward was making the statement that he was now the emperor over the British Empire, which of course included Wales. And that explains the odd design of his Carnarvon Castle. That's fascinating. So you have a, a sort of a Byzantine design right here in the middle of Wales. That's right. And Edward, I think, was trying to establish a new ca capital here on the western side of the Roman Empire, while there was a eastern capital down in Turkey. So from the opposite ends of the Roman Empire, the walls of Constantinople to the east and Carnarvon Castle to the west, west uniting with the east. You can see the similarities, those stripes and polygonal shapes in both. And there's another Roman Empire connection to Carnarvon. It sits atop the Roman settlement of Sagontium. Sagontium? Hmm? The Roman settlement of Sagontium was established in around 78 AD. Um, Edward I, in 1283, uh, was very keen to present himself as a warrior king or a Caesar and to ally himself with Constantine the Great. And there's even more Sagantium connections here. We're really enjoying uh, picking up uh, Welsh words and learning about um, Welsh name origins as we go along. Carnarvon, what does that actually mean? Carnarvon is Welsh for the fort in Arbon, uh, which is the region of North Wales here, overlooking Anglesey. And the fort actually refers to the Roman fort of Segontium. It all ties in together. I <laughs> knew it. I knew I was on to something. On to our next Iron Ring Castle, also a World Heritage Site. This one with a more traditional round shape and a fancy French influence. Uh -huh. Built between 1283 and 1289, Harlot Castle was modeled after the majestic castles of the historic Savoy Kingdom. 
Savoy is actually where modern day France and Switzerland are today, and you know the French and the Swiss have the best design sense. Only the top master masons were selected to build Harlot Castle, and today you can see how it rises majestically directly out of the rock. So today we get to stand hundreds of feet above the Irish Sea with the best views. Location, location, location. There's a very important master mason that was hand-selected to design this. Absolutely, yeah. Well, back in the 13th century, it was an extreme privilege for whoever had the role of designing Edward's castles. And Edward handpicked Master James of St George, brought him all the way over from Savoy, and he began to employ some of his practices here on the castles in Wales as well. And there's differences in the designs of King Edward's castles for good reason. So here the towers are a perfect circle because they can absorb the most impact from artillery coming in. Because um, here it was at the greatest risk of a Welsh attack. Over at castles like Carnarvon with the polygon edged angles, um, that was his imperial statement. That was the centre of government for Edward here in Wales and he really wanted to focus on more of an um, artistic design really. So here it was more all about the military aspect. And part of that military might was shown in Harlech's terrific height. And if you're off, you know, in the sea looking up, it looks as if the castle is rising out of uh, the dome. Absolutely, yeah. And that was, that, was that the intention, to make it look like it was part of the rock that we're standing Absolutely. on? Absolutely. With all of Edward's castles, he hand chose the spot for each and every one of them. Um, and yeah, obviously with the impressive range of Snowdonia and the sea, that's what's captured all the imaginations of artists and poets throughout the century since. Harlech withstood the longest siege in British history, from 1461 to 1468, during the War of the Roses, which had something to do with why all these little holes are everywhere. Time for our why is that there moment. And it's the first time we've seen here in the UK um, put lug holes going up in spirals around the towers here. And um, it meant that the scaffolding could go all the way around, which is obviously why explains the height that we've got here at Harlech. And in addition to fighting wars and all that stuff, King Edward had private royal apartments in each of his castles, and his Harlech royal apartment was complete with another very important engineering marvel. I'm interested in an area called the uh, garderobe. The garderobe, the most important part of the castle, yeah. What is that? Um, so the garderobe was the toilet in the medieval period, um, and Master James St George, again, thought it was very important that he designed a tower exclusively for um, as a toilet essentially, designing a ditch to carry away everything from it, and if you want privacy, forget it, everyone went in at once. So at that time though, that was sort of advanced plumbing, even though it doesn't seem so advanced to us today? Absolutely, yeah, so um, yeah, pretty much one of the first forms of plumbing, yeah, here in the British Isles, yeah. Oh, that's funny. When he wasn't building La Toilette Royale, Master James of St. George was busy designing our next castle and also a World Heritage Site. And some say it's the fairest of them all. Beaumaris Castle was the last and the largest built by King Edward I as part of his iron ring to keep those Welsh in line. It was begun in 1295 and was never finished. It has perfect symmetry and some people think it looks like a spaceship. All I know is that the name Beau means beautiful and Morris means marsh and I just think it's beautiful overall. Saving the best for last, you might even say Beau Morris was King Edward's piece de résistance. It's perhaps the most impressive example of a concentric castle in the world, a castle within a castle for added protection. Because Beaumaris was built on that flat, marshy land, Master James didn't have the same challenges as building atop an uneven, rocky cliff like at Harlech, so it was a little easier to experiment with the size and shape he wanted. But do you notice something interesting here? It looks a little short to withstand attack, right? Time for our why is that there moment. Well, that's because Beaumaris is forever unfinished. The towers were meant to be twice as high. Why? Well, after a lifetime of conquests for King Edward and a lifetime of building those castles that helped said conquests, our lads King Longshanks and Master James of St. George both died before Beaumaris was finished. And here's another curiosity. As safe and sturdy as Beaumaris Castle was, it was never attacked, maybe because everyone thought it was too pretty. 